Hey, welcome to another lesson of Make Science Easy. Today we're going to be looking at cells, tissues and organs. Make sure that you are using your resources and filling them in as you go along. Cells, tissues and organs. If we take one cell, any cell at all, it has all of the features that we'd expect. This is an onion skin cell. So it's got a nucleus, a cytoplasm, a cell wall, a cell membrane, a sap vacuole. It is a very, very basic cell. When we get cells of the same type together, they always work together. They help each other. They perform the same function. When we put cells of the same type together, we call them tissues. Tissues are groups of the same type of cells working together. When we take one tissue and we join those tissues together, we start to make something more. We start to make an organ. If we join lots of heart cells together, we make a heart tissue. If we join lots of heart tissues together, we eventually make a heart. So lots of tissues working together form organs. All of the organs in our body help to contribute to our seven life processes. Each organ is made up of different specialized cells and different tissues make different organs. So, the tissues in your liver are completely different to the tissues in your heart. Different organs have all got different functions and they all have different cells and tissues to allow them to do that function. What does this mean in terms of our life processes? It means they all do different things. Some organs contribute towards the same life processes. Some organs are involved in different life processes. But within an organism, within a living thing, all seven life processes are helped by the organs. It is these organs that enable our bodies to perform all seven life processes. If you're struggling to understand this, we can think of our organism a bit like a house. If we think about what your house is made up of, it's made up of bricks. Each individual brick is like a cell. When we put lots of bricks together, they're no longer individual bricks, they're no longer cells, they become walls. The walls are like the tissues. If we join lots of walls together, it's no longer just the wall. It becomes a room, something with a specific job. You don't cook in your bedroom. Why? Because each room is specialized to do a job. So the rooms are like organs. They are built by specific tissues. And finally, if we join all of our rooms together, each of them with their own specific job, we make a house. Well, our house is like our organism. It's made up of lots of rooms, all with different functions. There's another way that your house is a bit like an organism. You might have three bedrooms in your house. That is like an organ system. All of the bedrooms do the same thing. Well, in your body, you have organ systems where multiple organs all work together to do the same thing, to enable a process such as digestion. An organ is part of an organism that has a specific job or function. Every organ does something slightly different. They either directly or indirectly contribute to our seven life processes. Remember, Mrs. Grimm, organs often work together to form organ systems, like the digestive system. So we have your mouth, your salivary gland, your esophagus, your stomach, your liver, your intestines, all of these organs allow digestion to take place. If we remove one of those organs from our digestive system, it would no longer function and we would not be able to do the life process of nutrition. We're going to look at some specific examples of organ systems and we're going to think about the organs that make them up. So we've got the circulatory system where we've got the heart that pumps blood around our body. The heart moves the blood to all the other organs, to all of your muscles. The red blood cells deliver oxygen to every cell in the body. Your blood travels around the body in blood vessels called veins, arteries and capillaries. And again, we can think of this a bit like a road. Your red blood cells are the cars. They carry things around. The veins and arteries and the capillaries are roads. The veins and arteries are major roads. The capillaries are minor roads. They all transport things around. The main life process our circulatory system is going to contribute towards is respiration. We've got our musculoskeletal system. Two body systems in one here. We've got our muscles and our skeleton. 
both contribute towards the same function. The muscles are connected to our bones, they're connected by tendons. The muscles move and they make our bones move. This means our whole body can move, so of course it's really important for the life process of movement. Other important systems are excretory system. We've already mentioned parts of this in previous lessons. We get rid of waste that our body has made. So chemicals such as urine are removed from our blood through our kidneys. The urine gets stored in our bladder before being removed from our body through the urethra. Getting rid of waste products is vital in a living thing. They will poison us. Our excretory system helps excretion. Our respiratory system, again, a vital system. It brings oxygen into our body. We breathe in through our lungs. We excrete the waste products of respiration. We get rid of all the carbon dioxide we make. One thing that's really important here is the name is quite confusing. The respiratory system, although it helps respiration by bringing oxygen into the body, is not directly involved in respiration. Remember, respiration happens in every cell in your body. Respiration provides energy. Respiration does not specifically happen in the respiratory system. We've got our nervous system. Our nervous system is involved in the life process of sensitivity. We've got two main parts of our nervous system, our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. The brain and the spinal cord control our central nervous system. They control everything or nearly everything our body does. They send signals to the rest of the body through our neurons, our specialized cells. They receive signals from the rest of our body. And our nervous system is made up of many sense organs. Your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, your tongue, your skin. All of these organs detect stimuli and our nervous system can work out what's going on. This is all important for sensitivity. Our brain uses the messages from our sense organs. We've got our reproductive system. Obviously, it's important for the process of reproduction. In humans, we have male and female reproductive organs. And reproductive organs and reproductive systems are important for creating new life. The reproductive system is really the only part of the body which differs from males and females. Remember, reproductive systems in different animals are going to be different. Reproductive systems in plants are going to be different. But they all do the same job to create new life. In summary, when we have lots of similar cells, they work together. They make tissues. Lots of groups of tissues work together to make our organs. Multiple organs work together to make our organ systems. And all of our organ systems work together to make our organism, our living thing. Every cell, tissue, organ and organ system contributes to one or more of the life processes. Remember, Mrs. Gren, movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion and nutrition. Mrs. Gren. We should now know all about the organs and the organ systems. We should know how cells make tissues. As always, if there's anything you don't understand, go back, watch your video again. If there are concepts from other videos you haven't understood, go back and watch them. It's vital that your knowledge is always building. If you don't understand the previous concepts, you'll find it hard to build your knowledge. Thanks for watching this video on cells, tissues and organs. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to watch your next video of movement in and out of cells. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep learning.